Cause you're with us Whose holidays are Fiera Pull up a deck chair and sit back, relax. It's time for your favorite cruise hour. You're on board, just cruising. Whether you're dreaming of your first cruise or planning your next one, join Larry Jackson as he explores the magical world of cruising. Watch today's cruise. Here's Larry Jackson. Good morning. Aloha, a como mai, and welcome aboard. I'm Larry Jackson, owner of Cruise Holidays of Vieira, and I'll be your cruise director for this week's edition of our radio magazine that's all about the magical world of travel. Well, first off this morning, I want to wish my lovely and gracious wife, Linda, a very happy birthday. Today, December 2nd, is her birthday. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I love you. All right, we're back from our Thanksgiving cruise aboard Azamara Cruise Line's ship, The Quest, uh, that took us to Key West, Havana, Cuba. We spent Thanksgiving Day in Havana and on to Cozumel and then back to Miami. So what we did was uh, a week ago last Monday, we departed from my, well, actually we departed from our offices here in Sun Tree. We had uh, 17 folks with us. Uh, we had a 34 passenger bus and 17 people. That's the way we like to travel down to Miami. Uh, very pleasant, uneventful ride down there. Boy, that's a busy port. <laughs> we think we got a lot of folks here. Uh, Monday morning in Miami, there were there were two Norwegian ships, uh, two Carnival ships, and a Royal Caribbean ship, and plus Azamara. So, boy, that place is jumping. But we had a very uneventful uh, trip, as I said, and uh, great embarkation. Uh, embarkation was a little slow because there's a form that you have to fill out when you're going to Cuba that uh, basically says that when you get there, you're going to only do the things that the U.S. government allows you to do while you're in Cuba, which means that you take tours that are people-to-people exchanges that you don't go wandering off on your own. However, we were exempt from those provisions because those were reinstated. It's all very complicated, but um, it, it shouldn't deter you from going to Cuba, and we'll talk more about that later on. Well, we boarded the Azamar Quest. She's a 690-passenger Renaissance uh, four category ship, and we had been on her in January on a New Year's Eve cruise through the Southern Caribbean. It was great to be back. Uh, two of the crew members, uh, one of the girls in the restaurant and the steward on our deck had uh, remembered us from the last cruise that's always nice and that's that's another nice thing about the small ships um as a matter of a fantastic cruise line we we really enjoyed it we enjoyed it so much in january we wanted to go back in november and then when they came up with this added itinerary going to cuba that's when we decided to go so we cruised out on monday uh tuesday we arrived in key west and spent the day there uh, nothing much new there. It's all completely recovered from the hurricane. The only thing that was interesting was they have uh, must be about maybe 40 or 50 um, private boats or sailboats stacked up along the queue, the key there that goes from the naval base into town. And these were all boats that were damaged in the hurricane that were brought ashore. Uh, and then you could look out into the lagoon and see some more out there that were kind of resting on their side. So that, that was really the only uh, noticeable damage from the hurricane that we saw. So we spent the day there. Next day we were off for Cuba. Uh, one of the things we had to do, we turned in our passports. Uh, when you go to Cuba on board a cruise, uh, they automatically register you for a visa and purchase a visa for you. Uh, it costs $75, and they charge that to your onboard account. Uh, which they did for us, and then we got our uh, our passports back uh, early on on Tuesday evening. We we went down and we were able to get our passports. So the next morning we arrived in Havana, and uh, we departed the ship. Uh, now it's kind of interesting when you leave the ship, you have your passport with your visa, and you go through to a Cuban customs person and they look at you and everything, then they take your visa and stamp your passport. Now, every time you leave the ship or come back on the ship, you have to go through the customs people. But once you've had your visa stamped, then you don't, I mean, you just show them your passport and they show that you paid for the visa. That's what they're very interested in is the payment for the visa more than anything else. So then when we're off, uh, we took a uh, bus tour of of Havana. Um, 
just a few thoughts on uh, Havana. First of all, the people are wonderful. They are so nice and um, obviously very glad to see Americans. Um, one of the when you go through the town, it's um, it's a little depressing because you see all of these beautiful buildings or what had been beautiful buildings that have been neglected for basically 60 years because they just don't have the money, nor can they buy the concrete because they can't buy anything for the United States. And that's uh, the closest place that, that provides concrete. So these buildings are just crumbling. Now they are attempting to repair and fix up a lot of the buildings in Havana, but it's a slow process. So you'll see these beautiful uh, turn of the 1800, 1900s buildings with Spanish architecture. Uh, that have been restored, and then right next door, it looks like somebody set off a bomb. It's just a completely crumbled building. And even the buildings that are restored, there's no industry, so there's really uh, no companies. There's no, there's nothing to put in the buildings, so they're empty. Um, the other thing you notice is the lights in the building are very dim because they only have one power plant, and it doesn't operate very efficiently. Also, it belches out big black smoke uh, right in the middle of town. Um, so that was a little depressing. Now, everybody tells you about how happy they are uh, to be under the communist control. Um, I, of course, I kind of dispute that with so many people uh, risking their lives to get here to Florida to escape that. Um, and it's, it's, it is kind of sad because it, it is a vibrant, wonderful country, uh, beautiful um, scenery, the music. Uh, we went to the Floridana Hotel where the daiquiri was in, uh, invented, and there's a statue, of, a lifelike statue of Ernest Hemingway sitting at the bar. You can sit down with Ernest Hemingway and uh, have a daiquiri or have your picture made. Uh, the, and uh, they had the, the um, Cuban music band in the, in the bar. It was just wonderful, and we just had a great time and really enjoyed it. They took us to the Revolution Square uh, where you see the big buildings with a, a portrait, portraiture of Che Guevara on the side. Uh, and that's where Fidel used to make all of his speeches, those two and three hour speeches we heard about. So that was kind of cool. But the cars, the car, everybody talks about the cars. As one of my guides said, um, Havana really is a rolling museum. And that's, I think, the best way to put it. The, the old cars are everywhere. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You can see where they've been welded and they, they're keeping them together. A lot of the cars, the engines have been replaced with diesel engines because diesel is so much less expensive there. They're paying about between 5 and a half and $6 a gallon for diesel fuel. Everything is very, very expensive from that for the people that are living there. We found the pricing was very inexpensive, except for Cuban cigars are still very expensive. And uh, just a tip, if you're going to buy Cuban cigars, you want to go to one of the government-approved stores because the quality control is there. Um, and But the stores are everywhere, and they're very nice, and so uh, we did that. On uh, Thanksgiving Day, we had a tour uh, in a 1959 Chevy. Uh, it had the original engine, a six-cylinder, and so... Um, uh, five of us piled into it, and it was a convertible, bright pink, and we rode around Havana in it and just had a fabulous time. Had a great uh, driver who spoke no English, and we spoke no Spanish, but we got along just fine. <laughs> we went all over the place and had a great time. So that was our uh, uh, adventure in Havana. Again, we loved it. Um, one of the, um, I, We found that the pricing prices were very good. The people were very nice. Uh, very easy to get around, and I would definitely go back again in a heartbeat. I would like to see some more of the country. Uh, one, one of the things that's going to be happening, Royal Caribbean just announced that they're going to be expanding out to do more seven-day and eight-day cruises to Cuba. Uh, most of those will be coming out of Miami, but then they're going to go to a couple of other ports of call. Um, they're going to Santiago de Cuba and Cien, Cienfuegos, so there will be more ports being added. Um, we don't see any slowdown in uh, cruising to Cuba, so um, if you're thinking about going, uh, please give us a call and we'll let you know all about it. Well, here's the band. We're at our first time out of the day. We're going to run ashore for a very brief time out. Please join us on the other side. Uh, today, we're going to talk about cruising in New England and Canada, so please join us and we'll tell you all about that.
This is Just Cruisin' on 1240 and 1350 WMMB. Here's Larry. Hi there, and welcome back. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. So glad you could be with us. This is weather right now just absolutely gorgeous. Mm. It's uh, really Hawaii, Hawaii weather, uh, you know, low 60s at night or upper 60s at night and 80s during the day. Fabulous. Listen, I just want to finish up on our uh, telling you about our cruise to Cuba and Cozumel on Azamara, the Quest. That's uh, one of their two current ships. They're going to have a third one later on. i tell you some of the unique things about uh, Azamara. They have uh, something called White Night, and uh, we had this on, uh, this was on Thursday, this was on Thanksgiving, and what they do is they take their pool deck and they create a big barbecue and a buffet there, and of course we had turkey, and what was really surprised, we had lobster tails served to us by the captain, but anyway, the whole deck is done in white, and uh, they put white bunting up and white signs, and they encourage all of the uh, passengers to wear white that night. It is really great, except for one minor problem. We had this big thunderstorm move right over the top of the ship just right after the beginning of the white night. Everybody got really soaked, and there was about two inches of water on the deck. We fortunately had found a table underneath the cover, so that was fine. So that was one of the unique things. But normally, the white night is just re- what a buffet they put out. It's really fantastic. Uh, the other thing that Azamara does. Uh, the, every night, you of course have, can have dining in the main dining room. We had fabulous meals. Uh, every meal, every dinner, there was probably four or five things that I would like to have tried. Uh, but up in the pat, up in the uh, Lido deck, up on the tenth uh, or ninth deck, they have uh, their buffet. And each night they have a different theme. Like one night was Asian, one night was French, one night was uh, Greek. And so that you can eat dinner up there with tablecloths and, and uh, but on Azamara, all the wine and the drinks are included in the price of your cruise. So that was very nice. And then we tried another restaurant that they have called the Patio, and that's just off the pool deck, and it's undercover, but they have a special menu there and a special kitchen. And I had one of the best lamb burgers I have ever had. Um, and it's it's a very, very nice meal, more casual than the dining room. So those are a few unique things to Azamara. The other thing that Azamara does is what they call an Azamazing evening. And for us, this happened on Cozumel, in Cozumel. Um, the, we arrived in Cozumel around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then they had a buffet dinner for us in the dining room. And after that, we went down to uh, the pier, and we boarded buses, and they took us out to um, Playa del Mia, Playa Mia, uh, which is on the end of the island there, and it's a big beach area, and um, it has a, a kind of a covered uh, seating area. It's all paved with tables and everything, and then they had a mariachi band with Mexican dancers and a whole evening of just Mexican culture with drinks and uh, hors d'oeuvres, and it was very, very nice. And um, then we boarded our buses, came back to the ship, and when we got back there, the uh, captain was standing there with glasses of champagne to welcome us back. Their band was playing. Uh, They had more wine and hors d'oeuvres if you wanted them, and uh, so it was a very nice evening. It's called the Oz Amazing Evening. These all things occur on all... Azamara Cruises. So Azamara is a um, adjunct of Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. It's kind of like their upper scale uh, cruise line. I highly, highly recommend Azamara Cruises if you haven't taken them. They go all over the world. Uh, They're currently in the Caribbean for the winter, and then they'll be heading off to Europe. Uh, Their other ship is in Australia right now. The other ship is called The Journey. Well, let's. Uh, I've been getting some questions about cruising in Canada and New England, so I thought I'd just go over some of the Canada and New England 101 for you. Um, our major players uh, in this arena in Canada and New England are Princess Cruise Lines, Holland America, um, Celebrity, and Royal. Um, the ones with the most itineraries that go uh, all during the summertime are Holland America and Royal Caribbean. Um, now, Princess and Celebrity go mainly to Canada and New England in the fall because they're trying to capture the fall colors. Our season in New Canada, New England, 
for the seven day cruises that uh, they generally run pretty much like our Alaska season from May. They go into October because, again, they're trying to capture some of the colors. And then they do repositionings from up in either uh, Cape Liberty, which is Bayonne, New Jersey, or Boston or New York City, and then they come down to Fort Lauderdale uh, in the October, November time frame uh, to be back here for the winter season in the Caribbean. And those are very interesting cruises. They generally last about 14 or 15 days. Um, you um, go, um, basically, you so most of them start in Montreal or Quebec. This is the repositioning cruises I'm talking about, and these are the long ones, the 14 to 15 days that happen in April on the way up and in October on the way back down. So let's talk about, to start off with, uh, the seven-day itineraries that we're in during the summertime. Um, Holland America does it uh, does their cruises out of Boston. Uh, I'll just read you the itinerary. This, this will give you an idea. Uh, it's around, they go from Boston to Bar Harbor, Maine, to Halifax, Canada, Sydney, Canada, Prince Edward Island. Now, Prince Edward Island is a beautiful little town, um, and we have two very good friends who live there, Ken and Deborah. Uh, wonderful people, and you'll meet wonderful people in Prince Edward Island. But uh, that is the home of Anna of Green Gables, and uh, the Canadian National Parks has, uh, have restored the farm and the farmhouse and everything about it to look just like it did when Anna of Green Gables was uh, was written. And then you wind up in Quebec, and then you can do that in reverse, Quebec down to Boston. Um, Princess does some seven-day cruises out of New York City. They stop in Newport. Uh, Newport, I've told you before, is where the great cottages are, the, the mansions that the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts built, built back during the 1800s. Wonderful stop there. Then they go to Boston for the day, Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine is where L.L. Bean is headquartered, and you can also take an excursion up to Kenny Bunkport if you'd like to see some more of Maine. Um, then they go to Bar Harbor. Um, and uh, let's see. I'm sorry. They go Portland, Maine, St. John, which is where the Bay of Fundy is, Halifax, Sydney, Prince Edward Island, and Quebec. So that's princesses. Uh, Royal Caribbean does pretty much the same thing. They go from Cape Liberty to Portland to Bar Harbor, St. John, and Halifax, and then back to Cape Liberty. So those are kind of gives you an idea of what you're going to be seeing. Now, a lot of folks want to see the fall colors, which is a little bit risky because we never know when that's going to be happening. Uh, again, princes and celebrity uh, concentrate their uh, sailings there in September and October. Celebrity begins their sailings. Um, and, and again, these are going into Montreal and Quebec and then coming down to either Cape Liberty, Boston, or New York City. So that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. So you can choose the seven day. Uh, in the fall, they tend to do longer cruises, 11 nights. Um, for instance, Celebrity does 11 night cruise. Um, Oh, Celebrity also does a summer cruise out of Bayonne, which goes to Boston, Portland, Bar Harbor, Quebec, Sydney, Halifax, and back to Cape Liberty. So you've got all these different combinations. But you see the the, the major thing is you're going to be having three or four stops up in New England. Uh, then you'll have a couple stops in Canada, uh, in the Maritimes, as they call them, and then into Quebec and Montreal. Uh, basically, uh, now... Oceana has some very interesting cruises during the summertime. They, and this is the one we did last year where you go out of New York City, you go up through New England, stop in Boston, um, Bar Harbor, Port, um, I'm sorry, Newport, and then you go over to Bermuda for a couple of days and then come back to New York City. So that's another variation. But basically, you, you can get the idea. You're seeing several ports in the New England and a couple, two to three ports in uh, Canada, you can go during the summertime for the shorter cruises, and then you're going to be able to sightsee a little bit more. It's a little bit more pleasant weather. Uh, if you go in the September, October time frame, you can take the repositioners, or you can take the longer cruises. Um, Celebrity has a cruise that overnights in Quebec and also overnights in Boston. So these are the different variations you have. Now, there's a very easy way to cut through all the clutter here, and that's to call us at Cruise Holidays of Vieira at 321-242-1331. 
and come in and have a, uh, make an appointment. And then we'll go over all the different options for you uh, for what you're looking at to go to New England and see if you want to go to see the colors or if you'd rather go and see more of the history or if you'd like to combine New England with uh, Bermuda. Those are basically the options you have. And, uh, again, you've got a lot of different choices up there. It's it's not really that confusing. It's just uh, a matter of druthers. The pricing is, is very reasonable in that part of, of the world. I really like uh, to take the cruises out of New York because you can go in early, spend a couple of days or three days in New York City, and fill all the squares there, go to a Broadway play, go out to Ellis Island. Um, we can make all of that happen for you, stay on Times Square. It's really, really a fun cruise. And then you leave right out of the heart of New York City, right at the Manhattan Pier. So that's the way I like to do that that cruise. But uh, whatever, you, whatever you would like to do, we'll make it happen at Cruise Holidays of Vieira. Well, here's the band again. And that's telling us another shore excursion is coming up. We're going to run ashore when we come back. I've got some uh, specials to tell you about. And we'll talk about the news of the week in the world of travel. So please join us. out on the show listen to just cruising on our iheart radio channel with the iheart radio app let's take a boat to bermuda wow speaking of new york let's take a plane to st paul uh, chairman of the board oh blue eyes let's grab a kayak to quincy or night ah uh, what a voice let's get away well, welcome back to Just Cruising. Uh, again, my name is Larry Jackson, and I'm the owner of Cruise Holidays of Vieira, and we are your boutique vacation planning store located in the Century area. Uh, we have a great website that I'd love for you to visit because there's all this information I'm about to tell you on it. It's uh, the website address, and you just put this up in the address block. Uh, you just put in Vieira, V-I-E-R-A, dot Cruise Holidays with an S, Dot com and that's going to bring up a web page and your first thing you'll see is my picture and Linda's picture and, or you can just go to Google and in the search box put cruise holidays of Vieira and that'll bring that up now first thing I want to tell you about is uh, the specials some of the specials that we've got going on and I told you that we were very thrilled a few weeks ago about having the Harmony of the Seas uh, coming to Port Canaveral in May of 2019 we have basically four different ways for you to join her on her first cruises out of uh, Port Canaveral. We have a four-day cruise on May 6th, 2019, a three-day cruise on May 9th. We have a seven-day cruise on May 12th, or you can combine the three and the seven-day for a 10-day cruise. Now, to get all of the pricing and the itineraries for all these different cruise combinations, all you have to do is look on our website, and right there you'll see Harmony of the Seas comes to Port Canaveral. And uh, it's got all the information for you that you that you need. Uh, another special I want to tell you about, which is also on our web page, and this is the inaugural cruise, another inaugural cruise. Uh, this is for the Celebrity Edge, December 16th through the 23rd of 2018. It's right around the corner. This is the world's most unique cruise ship that will be coming to us here in Florida. We, this uh, cruise is pretty much sold out, but we still have some cabins available in our group. We're going to have a bus from here at our offices in Sun Tree taking you down to Fort Lauderdale. You don't have to worry about a thing. Everything will be taken care of. Your luggage, um, your embarkation, everything will be taken care of for you on this inaugural. And we've got some pricing. It's a very uh, special pricing. It includes travel guard insurance, the round-trip bus, and the gratuities. So, again, that's the Edge, Celebrity Edge inaugural. That's on our webpage, too, right there, vieira.cruiseholidays.com. And also, I wanted to tell you that uh, Linda and I will be going to Antarctica in January. We're going to be leaving here January 20th, uh, flying down to Buenos Aires through Houston. And we're going to be boarding the Celebrity Infinity for a 14-night, two-week cruise through 
Antarctica. And our itinerary is leaving Buenos Aires. This is what I love. We're going to have three days at sea. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. I can't wait. Three whole days of cruising. Then we um, arrive at Ushua, Argentina. And we'll spend the day there. And then after that, that's on Thursday. And from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll be cruising through the Cape Horn, Cape Horn around the Cape, and then down to Antarctica. We'll be going past some islands. Uh, now, we will not be landing in Antarctica. We will not be going ashore, but we're going to spend two days seeing Antarctica and all the magnificent colors and ice flows and all the beautiful things that are down there. Then we're going to come back up through the Falkland Islands, stop in the Falkland Islands. We're going to uh, Puerto Madryn, Argentina, then Montevideo, Uruguay, and back to Buenos Aires. And uh, there is a very special pricing going on right now for a balcony cabin for two people is six thousand one hundred and thirty six dollars or thirty one hundred dollars per person. The the airfare down there is roughly seventeen hundred dollars a person. So if you'd like to join us going to Antarctica, Lynn and I would love to be able to take you with us. Uh, we have uh, several folks already signed up to go with us. And um, we'll put this all together for you, and off we'll go to see Antarctica. I'm really excited about this. So that's our next cruise coming up, January 21st. If, uh, now, this is not on our website because it's kind of limited offer. So if you'd like information about that, call us at Cruise Holidays of Vieira, 321-242-1331. Well, let's go back and look at some of the news of the week that uh, happened in the world of travel. Kind of a light news week, as you can imagine, with a uh, um, uh, holiday in the middle and short work week and all that other stuff. One thing that did happen, uh, down November 28th, the CLIA, Cruise Lines International Association, which we are proud members of at Cruise Holidays of Vieira, had a meeting. And this, this year they had their meeting, their annual meeting in Havana, Cuba. And so they had 12 of the world's most important cruise line companies and their CEOs were down for a two-day forum to discuss with Cuban officials uh, about uh, what's going to be happening with cruise tourism going forward. Uh, basically, the results of the meeting were that the industry leaders, the cruise industry leaders, really wished that um, the Cuban and American governments could get together and end all of these restrictions to tourism. So we just open it wide open again so anybody can go to Cuba without any restrictions, no people-to-people -people exchanges, no uh, visas, no any of that sort of thing. Don't see that happening anytime soon. I really think the people of Cuba need to look at who's running their government. And until they get rid of the Castros, I think it's uh, going to be a long road to haul. Uh, so anyway, that was what was going on with the CLIA. Uh, some of the comments that came out from Frank Del Rio, who is the CEO of Norwegian Cruise Lines, he said the cruise industry is very much, very much supportive of Cuba's remaining open as a destination. All brands are doing fantastic in terms of business, and we want to see it open in the future. We are hopeful the governments can work out their differences because the good news is we are still here, and guests are happy coming to Cuba. So, uh, as I told you, our uh, report to you on Cuba is a great place to go, and we highly recommend it. And there's all kinds of different ways. You can go down for the day, a four-day cruise out of Tampa. You can do a four-day cruise, cruise out of Miami, you can do seven day cruises, you can do eight day cruises. So, lots of different um, choices for you going to Cuba. Uh, we have been telling you about a feature that we have on our webpage called Ask the Travel Guy. And that's on our webpage, Viera.cruiseholidays.com. And if you go there and you just scroll down, you'll see a big icon there. It says Ask the Travel Guy. And you just click it and type in your question, and I'll be happy to answer. Well, this week, uh, Ed sent us a question. And he noticed on the web, which we've been pointing out to you, that several cruise lines now have gone to non-refundable deposit fares as an option. It's, it's not the only fare there is, but uh, you do get a savings by booking a cruise with a non-refundable uh, deposit. And Ed's question is, can I take out travel guard insurance to cover me in case I have an illness that prevents me or I have to cancel the cruise so that I can get my deposit back? And is there an increase in the 
premium because you're uh, insuring a non-refundable deposit cruise? The answer is yes. You can take out a policy as soon as you make your deposit. Uh, and that's a good way because it also gives you a waiver for the pre-existing conditions clause in travel insurance. So if you buy your policy within 14 days of making your deposit, then you don't have to worry about pre-existing conditions being, uh, if you have one that your claim be is denied. There is no additional premium for insuring a cruise that has a non-refundable deposit, and we heartily uh, recommend that you do that because then your cruise will be insured when you take it uh, in case anything goes wrong. Uh, we uh, had some folks that had to visit the infirmary while we were on the Ozamara Quest. That, that is going to be covered by Travel Guard insurance that we had for them. And uh, if you have a non-refundable deposit and you have a covered reason, that is an illness or a death in the family or something like that, then you will be able to get that non-refundable deposit reimbursed to you from Travel Guard Insurance. So thank you, Ed, for that question. And uh, we invite all of you, if you have any type of uh, travel question, uh, please go to Ask the Travel Guy right there, or you can uh, email us, askthetravelguy at gmail.com, and uh, we'll be happy to respond to your question if we can find the answer. If we can't, we'll let you know that, too. Uh, I, had, I found this article last week about um, the Port of Nassau is working, and they're, they say they need about a $100 million makeover for that port, and I would agree with that. That It's uh, been sadly neglected over the years. It's uh, A lot of ships call there at the same time. It can be very crowded. It can be very long lines to get back to your ship to show your ID and your uh, ship card to get back. And so I'm glad to see that they are starting to take steps in Nassau to revamp their pier there and their port procedures. Uh, they're talking about privatizing it. So that could be a really, really big um, boost uh, if they can find somebody. I would hope that some of the cruise lines will be stepping up to the plate to uh, help out Nassau to Uh, improve their pier down there. Um, Lots of lots of cruises going there. We're going to have more because we're adding more and more short cruises uh, and larger and larger ships to our short cruises. Uh, As we told you, the Mariner of the Seas will be coming to Port Canaveral in 2019. And that's going to be basically a 3,800 passenger ship going over to Nassau. And uh, several other cruise lines are adding longer I'm sorry, larger ships to the to the shorter itineraries are three- and four-day itineraries that are going over to the Bahamas. So uh, it's only going to get more crowded over there, so they're going to really need some more uh, work in Nassau. Uh, once again, I do want to invite you to don't forget about our website, vieira.cruiseholidays.com. There's a, a link there that will let you see our podcast for about our last nine shows. And also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, we are now, Just Cruising is now available for you to watch each week up on our YouTube channel. And you can link right to it right there on our webpage. Well, here's our last port of call for the week. And uh, we're going to run ashore for our last time. We'll be back with uh, more news of the world of travel and cruising. So please stay right where you're at. with Just Cruising here on 1240 and 1350 WMMB. Hi, and welcome back, everybody. Uh, this week, American Cruise Lines. Uh, a few weeks ago, we told you about cruising in America, and uh, one of the bigger players in the American market, the, the folks that cruise just here in America, the American Cruise Lines, launched their new riverboat, the American Song. Now, this is a completely unique riverboat to what we have had in the past here in the United States. What we've had in the past have been paddle wheel uh, ships. And uh, this is the first one that is what we call 
Uh, and the name of it, is, American Cruise Lines calls it their Modern Riverboat Series. It's going to look more like the boats that you're used to in Europe. Uh, it's not going to have a paddle wheel. It's going to be sleek. Um, it's going to have more open spaces. Um, it, the balconies, the cabins are going to be larger uh, with more picture windows and things like that. There'll be less antiques, less Americana on them. So this will be this is a new generation of American river boats. The the first one that American Cruise Lines launched on uh, November seventeenth is called the American Song. Uh, it was built in Chesapeake Shipbuilding in Salisbury, Maryland. She has five decks, accommodates 190 passengers, and has 102 staterooms. Uh, she has something very unique. Uh, the bow of the American Song is designed to open, allowing a retractable, rotating gangway to extend the ship's main deck directly to a river bank or a dock. Now, one of the unique things about American river, well, all of river cruising is you really don't need a pier. You don't really, you can just use the side of the bank of a river to um, go on your excursions. And what you then have to do, uh, for instance, on the American Queen, they have a uh, gangway that they, that's, I don't know how, it's suspended on wires and they can rotate it over the side of the boat and then put it down on the river bank and then you can disembark or embark that way. This one is going to have a retractable gangway so that they can do this sort of thing. And uh, we've we've stopped at some really unique places on American rivers. Uh, there was a place on the Ohio River called a hole in the wall, and that's all it was was a cave. And we tied the they tied the American Queen up to a, a tree and put down that little gangway that gangway that moves over to the side. Uh, anyway, back to the American song. Uh, her inaugural season will begin in the fall of 2018 on the Mississippi and will continue on to the West Coast in 2019. So she's going to get all over the United States. She'll visit 25 states in the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, New England, the Southeast, and the Mississippi um, River regions. So that's American Cruise Line's newest song ship, American Song. And uh, we'll see if this is the beginning of a wave of a whole bunch of new riverboat river boats. Um, we told you that American Queen has bought another paddle wheel that they are in the process of refurbishing. So she'll, they'll now have three uh, paddle wheel boats. And uh, Viking has made, Viking River Cruises has made noises off and on about coming into the American market. And they're going to be using an Ameri- um, a modern river boat also. So we'll see how this all develops. Uh, Again, I wholeheartedly recommend cruising in America. It's so much easier than Europe. The pricing is about the same when you add in the airfare. Uh, And there is so much to see in this country. You know, we we really take it. We take it for granted. The wonderful place. Think of all the major cities we have in the United States to compare to other countries, Uh, each one of which you could spend a week in. And I just don't think we get out and see our own country enough. So, uh, And if you would like to get out and see this country, we have all kinds of different ways to do that for you at Cruise Holidays of Vieira. We are your boutique vacation planning store, and whether it's an American river cruise, an American land tour, a train tour, a train combining with a cruise in Alaska, uh, whether it's a 10-day cruise tour of Hawaii, all of these American adventures we can help you with, as well as the foreign ones, too. We represent all 26 cruise lines, ocean cruise lines, all of the river cruise lines. Most of the land tour companies uh, are available to you through Cruise Holidays of Vieira. And you've got a great deal of expertise and a great deal of service that backs it up, all for no additional charge. You will not pay a dime more than you would if you went directly with the different cruise lines or travel companies to book your vacation. And I I will guarantee you it will be much easier than doing it on your own. Well, here's an article that uh, I guess all of that publicity last spring about dragging and kicking passengers off of airplanes that United was doing had an impact Uh, The U.S. Department of Transportation data shows airlines denied boarding to 2,745 passengers between July and September. Now, while that sounds like a lot, it's only one in every 67,000, but it's also the lowest rate that the Department of Transportation has ever uh, seen in 20 years of keeping records on passengers being bumped from um, 
uh, airlines. Also, the number of passengers opting to take cash in exchange for giving up their seats is also falling. I would say probably the uh, airlines are doing a little bit better job about managing their uh, overbooking so that not many people are being, as many people are being overbooked, so there's less necessity to uh, bump folks. And this is interesting. The carrier that most, where you're most likely to get bumped from is Spirit Airlines. And uh, Delta, Virgin America, JetBlue, and United uh, only denied boarding to 1 in 250,000 passengers. And that's like a quarter of what the other cruise lines. So uh, the big boys have seen to have gotten their act together. Uh, so I think we're going to be, it's, by the way, I wanted to tell you, we are seeing uh, airfares for Europe for next, uh, let's say, August, September, and October, very, very low. We're looking at um, $650 round trip fares to London. Uh, I saw uh, to uh, Vienna and Budapest, we had a fare yesterday. It came in at about $750 per person. Uh, this is on Lufthansa with a direct flight from Orlando to Frankfurt involved. So um, if you've been thinking about going to Europe next year, now would be a great time to plan that. If you're going to be doing a river cruise or if you'd like to do a land tour, we can help you with all of that at Cruise Holidays of Vieira. Uh, this November time frame, I know you're concentrating on Christmas and you're thinking about that. But, boy, this is a great time to be planning a vacation next year in uh, Europe, because I, the, the river boats are starting to fill up. I saw, again, yesterday I was doing some river boat planning, saw several cruises where the uh, most e- economical cabins were completely sold out. And uh, this is on the Danube, uh, the popular cruises. So word to the wise, don't delay. Let's get going. And all you have to do is call us at Cruise Holidays of Vieira, 321-242-1331. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of Just Cruising. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've had a great time being here with you, and we hope you'll come back next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Join us again when we'll be here on 1240 or 1350. Join us on iHeartRadio, no matter where you are in the world, and we'll be there with you. And until we see you again, keep on cruising. Jackson of Just Cruising. Hope you're enjoying Just Cruising here on YouTube. If you'd like to keep up to date on all the videos that we'll be producing here in the uh, in the near future, all you have to do is click the subscribe button just below my picture here, or you can click right over here for a list of the latest videos. Either way, we look forward to seeing you again. Until we do, keep on cruising.